Men, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today as we continue to uh, on this journey. We continue on this journey of becoming the men that God wants us to be. And and uh, obviously there's lots of different um, aspects of this journey. This, this video, these videos are only a very small part of that journey. I realize that. Uh, and yet it's, it, it's a very helpful part um, because God has placed um, or uses other men to sharpen men. And so one way we're doing that is by reading books. Uh, this one is Tender Warrior by Stu Weber. who are picking up. Um, in the middle of chapter 8 on page 122, starting with the heading on page 122, titled, A Woman's Chemistry. A Woman's Chemistry. So um, this is obviously working on uh, helping men be the husbands that God designed them to be. And so um, I trust that this is helpful for you. Um, it's certainly helpful for me, and I want to be an encouragement to you to be the husband that God wants you to be, but ultimately to be the man that God has designed you to be. So um, let's jump in. Um, a woman's chemistry. As a man who seeks to apply intelligence to understanding, my wife, I need to grapple with some facts of chemistry. The whole universe runs on chemistry. Have you ever thought about that? As you sit reading this book, you are a collection of chemicals. <laughs> Yes, God made you with a spirit and a soul, which are so much larger than your physical ingredients, but your chemistry does affect how you live. A woman was created with a vastly different chemistry from her com counterpart. As men, we need to be attentive to the fact of life and sensitive to its implications. Dr. James Dobson writes, How can anyone who understands the cyclical pattern contend that there are no genetically determined physical, physiological, uh, no, psychological, psychological differences between males and females. No such system operates in men. The effect of the menstrual cycle is not only observed clinically, but it can be documented statistically. The incidences of suicides, homicides, and infanticides perpetrated by women are significantly higher during the period of premenstrual tension than any other phase of the month. Men, get your eyes open. Get your brain engaged. Understand these things. Don't put her down for the way she was created. Understand her as delicate and fragile and alert and sensitive. Dobson goes on and says, consider also the findings of Alec Copen and Neil Kessel, who studied 465 women and observed that there were more, they were more irritable and depressed during the premenstrual phase than during the mid-cycle. This was true for neurotic, psychotic, and normal women alike. I receive interesting letters from men who ask, how can I cope with my wife's irritability during this phase? Their question reminds me of an incident shared with me by my late friend, Dr. David Hernandez, who was an obstetrician and gynecologist in private practice. The true story involves Latin men whose wives were giving birth control pills by a pharmaceutical company. The Federal Drug Administration in America wouldn't permit hormonal research to be conducted, so the company selected a small fishing village in South America, which agreed to cooperate. All the women in the town were given the pill on the same date, and after three weeks, the prescription was terminated to, uh, terminated to permit menstruation. That meant, of course, that every adult female in the community was experiencing premenstrual tension at the same time. The men couldn't take it. They all headed for their boats each month and remained at sea until the crisis passed at home. They, they knew, even if some people didn't, that females are different from males, especially every 28 days. Women's needs are different. It's chemistry, pure and simple. And that's only one factor in gender equation. Men and women communicate in an utterly different way. Men and women view life in an utterly different way. Clinical psychologist and family therapist Dr. Willard Harley writes, A man can have the best intention to meet his wife's needs, but if he thinks her needs are similar to his own, he will fail miserably. 
A male writer in the Arkansas Democrat illustrates that point by saying, Women are very touchy about certain gifts. As I discovered years ago after buying my girlfriend a catcher's mitt for her birthday, it seemed to me to be a particularly thoughtful gift, especially since she claimed to not be getting enough exercise. But apparently she didn't see it that way. The minute she unwrapped it, she ran sobbing from the room. At first I thought those were tears of joy streaming down her face. I figured she was overwhelmed at being the first in her crowd to have a catcher's mitt, that sort of thing. Or I figured she was so excited she couldn't wait to get outside and work on her throws to second base. But when she didn't return after a few hours, I got the hint. Here, I'd spent all that time running around from one sporting goods store to the next just to find the perfect gift. We're talking a Johnny Bench model here, top of the line, and she calls me insensitive? I mean, you'd think I gave her a year's subscription to Field and Stream. Or a, bo a box of shotgun shells, which everybody knows should be saved for Christmas stocking stuffers. Personally, I think she, sh she just had a lot of anger in her and took it out on me. Not that I'm trying to play amateur psychologist or anything. This guy just wasn't getting it, was he? He wasn't understanding. Of course, it's humorous newspaper column, but it's only funny because it's so close to reality. He obviously wasn't speaking her language and didn't seem all that anxious to learn her needs. So what are a woman's needs? What are the prerequisites for learning this wonderful, sometimes bewildering language called woman? Dr. Harley isolates five. The first is her need for affection, that is, tenderness. The second is conversation, the sharing of the heart. The third is honesty and openness, no secrets between us. The fourth is security, or physical and financial provision. The fifth is relational commitment. She must know she is a priority. Scripture refines those five feminine needs down into three imperatives for men. Honor, nourish, cherish. And listen, friends, that's no academic exercise. It's an action plan. Shakespeare said it this way. They do not love that do not... They do not love that do not show their love. That's what was happening in the home of the woman who wrote the poem about living in a tomb. I know her husband, and he is a good man. He has the best of intentions. He does love his wife. He just doesn't know how to say it or show it. He never effectively learned his, life, his wife's language. Olivia Newton-John, that other great English lyricist, stated it a little more bluntly when she sang, If you love me, let me know. If you don't, then let me go. That's it. You have to show it. Love has to be demonstrated, verbalized, expressed, woven into real words and real deeds. How does a man love a woman? He learns to know her needs and consistently speaks her language in meeting them. Well, men, we've only been uh, together for uh, just under... Uh, 10 minutes now, but I think we have enough here. Love gets to know the needs and consistently speaks the language in meeting those needs. Let's be real men, men who love well, men who love our wives really well and our kids really well and the people around us really well. And how do we do that? Learn the needs around us and, and learn how to speak the language or meet those needs because love shows. Let's be men who show love really well. Father, thank you for showing your love really well by coming to the earth, taking on flesh, going to the cross, paying for our sin so that we could be clean today, so that we could have hope for the future and strength to live each day for you. Father, thank you for your great love for us. Please continue to make us into your men that we might love you and love others really well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for joining me today, men. Uh, I'll see you next time as we continue on this journey to become the men that God wants us to be.